I use he, him pronouns, and I've been at the university for 25 years. Uh, I am delighted uh, that we had so many of our current students here to go ahead and share a little bit more about the program. Uh, but I would just say it's a great pleasure of mine to go ahead and, and, and be part of this program and uh, be an instructor in the program and see the amazing things that our students uh, do uh, to can use the business as a discipline uh, to connect to all the different disciplines that we see in the IBH program. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. All right, so we will go ahead and jump right in. So our plan for tonight, we will provide an overview of the IBH program, and then we will turn things over to our cohort one students who are joining us and waiting patiently, and they will kind of take over the second half of the session. They plan to introduce themselves to a walkthrough of Prince Frederick Hall, which is the home of IBH, you'll hear about in a minute, and then we will have plenty of time for Q&A at the end of the session. Please also feel free if you have questions along the way to put them in the chat and we will do our best to uh, address any topics you're wondering about. Before we get started though, I would love to know a little bit more about who we have joining us. Um, if you are able to use the raise hand feature, if you're familiar with that in Zoom, or if you have your camera on and just wanna raise your hand for us, uh, I have a few questions for you. So I'm wondering how many of you have been able to visit UMD and seen campus in person? Okay, I see some hands going up. Looks like a number of you have. Well, hopefully you'll at least enjoy our virtual tour of Prince Frederick tonight. You probably haven't had a chance to get into that building yet. Um, have a lot of you done something related to business during high school? Okay, I see the numbers going up again. So I think some of you are saying yes. That one's going higher. Okay, great. And finally, how many of you think a turtle is the best school mascot of all time? I think we should all raise our hand for that one, right? Yes, okay. Thank you all for participating. I just wanted to get a little bit of a feel for who we had this evening. Um, we will go ahead and get started. So IVH is the newest program under the Honors College. We are in our first year, so we just launched this past fall. Uh, our first cohort was 62 students. They're in our, their second semester currently. And this coming fall, we will have cohort two join us. So we'll be fully enrolled with freshmen and sophomores for the first time. But we are aiming for about 60 to 70 students again. So we're anticipating approximately 120 or so for the fall enrollment. Um, IBH has interdisciplinary in the name, and that is very important to us. We welcome students from all majors to join the program, and it was really created from the vision of the Smith School Dean, Prabhadav Konana. Uh, he wanted to engage the most talented Maryland students who are interested in business through this partnership between the Smith School of Business and the Honors College at Maryland. Um, I wanted to share a few of the details about the students in our first cohort. So 62 students and the group is quite diverse in many ways. We value diversity and we welcome students from all backgrounds and lived experiences in the program. Um, we are about 50% female, 50% male in terms of gender identity. Uh, we have 16 first generation college students who are the first in the family to attend university. Uh, we have a diversity of majors, so that interdisciplinary piece, just under half of our first cohort is majoring in a field of business within the Smith School, uh, which means a little over half are distributed across the rest of campus. About 20 students are across the engineering and computer science disciplines, and the remaining 12 or so students are um, pretty broadly distributed as well. So we have one kinesiology major, we have a handful of biology majors, a handful of undecided students who are still exploring their options on campus. Um, so really a good representation of the fields that the University of Maryland offers for academic study. 
at this point, I will go ahead and turn it back over to Joe so that he can talk a little bit about the academic components from the faculty perspective. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate it. So the program of uh, IBH curriculum is uh, it's really uh, very, I think, uh, exciting because we get a chance to um, have a sequence of courses uh, throughout the first two years of a student's journey at the University of Maryland. Uh, so the first class, which happens in the fall semester of your first year, is about the future of work. And like a lot of uh, classes in the Honors College, and certainly with an IBH, uh, we get a chance to dis debate, discuss, uh, and kind of uh, anticipate what some of the changing forces in the landscape, not just the business, but all the connected disciplines. And so here we grapple with the question about what the future of work looks like. Uh, you know, what is the organizational structure? What is the workplace environment? What is the employee engagement? How do employees interact with each other? How do different technologies and movement towards the gig economy and uh, forces because of the pandemic, how does that all shape the future of work? The second course, which uh, uh, the students are in right now, is called the Future of Analysis, and looking at kind of the way data is shaping and transforming uh, organizational uh, design, the way in which uh, changes in culture happen, engagement with employees. You know, so for example, in uh, this morning's class, we took a, a look at Amazon's fulfillment center and tried to develop policies about what types of data you can or should and should not collect, and how that data could potentially be used to improve performance of the organization and potentially hold employees accountable. In the second year uh, of the program, students take a class on business and deliberation, uh, where we spend quite a bit of time talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, the ability to reach across disciplinary boundaries and really infuse a, a sense of, of ethics within much of the, the, the business decisions that we're making. Uh, and then in the second semester of sophomore year is the capstone. And this is an experiential learning opportunity where students will work with a partner of ours. Uh, we're very fortunate in the Smith School of Business to have many alumni and corporate partners um, that are looking to not just hire our students, but help shape kind of the student experience. And so that's gonna be a capstone experience. Um, the last course there, the fifth course is uh, an experiential learning course. Um, this is where students have a little bit more choice with how they wanna fulfill um, that three credit course. Uh, and we have a number of different options. Liz will be teaching a class to help uh, students get credit for internship experience they may have between their freshman and sophomore year. Uh, we're putting thing, plans in place to do a study abroad trip during the month of January. Uh, and then of course, there are other sets of electives throughout the university that we would offer. And you could see that this uh, sequence of courses as well as the elective um, are kind of unique offerings to students in the IBH program one of the benefits of this curriculum design is uh, getting a cohort of students to interact with each other, get to know each other, and get to create along the way. Oh, we Back have to you, Liz, right? Oh, yeah, yeah so go ahead. We have a question that says, if I am a student in Smith, would this program be a review of what I would already be learning in my business courses? Yeah, so it's a great question. Um, and the short answer is no. Um, this program uh, runs in parallel uh, to the courses that you'll be taking as a Smith School major. Fortunately, many of the students who get into the Honors College come in with us, you know, AP credits or IB credits. Uh, and so they're looking to uh, programs like IBH to get the general education requirements. So we have scholarship and practice, for example, with our courses. Uh, we're exploring other options to get the general education requirements uh, with our curriculum. Uh, but this is done in addition to the courses that you might be taking as a Smith School major. Um, so for example, business statistics or principles of accounting will be done uh, in parallel. This is not a substitute for them. So um, because again, the, the I and IBH interdisciplinary means, you know, using this as a way to connect uh, to other disciplines. And then you'll have a, a connection to the Smith School if you're a Smith School major to take the courses there. I think there's one more question that will be good for this topic. So it says, I'm a CS major, so computer science major. If I have startup or entrepreneurial ambitions, how is IBH preparing CS with entrepreneurship? 
Uh, so this program doesn't specifically focus on entrepreneurship. Um, if you look at the University of Maryland, there's many offerings to help students with entrepreneurship, but most of them are catered towards junior and senior year. So I think this program lays a very strong foundation to understand how business operates and how business connects the dots of other disciplines. So for those students who may be inclined to be entrepreneurs, um, I think IBH is kind of a good starting point and then uh, prepare you for kind of junior and, and senior experience. For example, we have a, a minor in the Smith School of Business, which is very popular among our CS students on innovation and entrepreneurship, where students get to kind of incubate their ideas and hopefully bring them to market. So if you complete the IBH by the end of your sophomore year as a rising junior, uh, you may matriculate into that innovation entrepreneurship minor. All right. Anything else, Liz? Are we ready to go on? I think we're ready to move on. Thank All right. you. Good. Thank you. So we've touched on this, but in terms of education outside the classroom, um, we focus around several areas. So community building amongst the students and really forming that strong bond so that the IBHers have each other to rely on through their two years in the program. We also focus on professional development. Uh, the photo there is one of our teams presenting a class project during our fall class. So each semester in the first year, the students are doing three team projects per semester where they're able to work with other students in the program uh, and present in front of their peers leadership development as well. We recently created our inaugural IBH student board. So we have a group of 10 students who are helping to advise Joe and myself to provide feedback from the student perspective. Since we are a new program, we want to keep student feedback and input really at the center as we grow and develop the program over the next few years. Uh, industry engagement, we're able to take advantage of Maryland's location in the Washington, D.C. and Baltimore area and connect with some of the companies that are in the region. So in the fall, this photo is from a field trip that we took to a local company called Tolkoff Foods. Uh, we were able to go through and see their production line and then do a taste test. They produce condiments, so they were able to let us taste some of their products and uh, meet with the CEO and hear more about the operations of his family-owned business. And then Joe just mentioned education abroad. We definitely encouraging the IBHers to think outside their borders as education abroad at Maryland likes to say, and hoping to develop that trip for uh, January of winter term next year to take a group of students abroad and think about business from a global perspective. Community, I think, is at the heart of what we are doing this year in IVH, and I'm sure our current students will mention this in a few minutes. I wanted to just share a few photos from the experiences that we've had so far this year. Uh, this is the first group photo that we took in the program back before classes even started in the fall when we gathered the group and took them over to the outdoor rec center and did some team building experiences so that students could meet each other and feel a little more comfortable heading into their first class in the program in the fall. Uh, we also participated in the annual tradition of the Honors College Convocation, which welcomes all freshman honor students to campus in the fall. Um, the executive director is able to kind of build that broader Honors College community. Uh, Another annual tradition is the Honors College Citation Ceremony. So once our students complete the IBH program, they'll be able to participate and receive their Honors College Citation. Uh, in the fall, we didn't have anyone completing since we only had students starting the program, but we were able to award our inaugural Ports Outstanding Student Award uh, to Faith, who is here on the call, and you'll hear from her shortly. So we look forward to selecting a student who demonstrates excellence every year and recognize them at that ceremony. And finally, I want to touch on the living component. This is a living learning program and Prince Frederick Hall is the home of IBH. Uh, it is one of the nicest and newest residence halls on campus. It opened in 2014 and the full building is now 
housed with Honors College students. So it's the home of IBH and also ACES and DCC. So three honors programs are throughout the building. Uh, it also includes classroom and event spaces, which we have taken advantage of this year. Our spring class currently this semester is held in Prince Frederick, and we have a number of our extracurricular events in the building. I want to highlight that for this incoming cohort for fall 2023, IBH students will be required to live in Prince Frederick Hall for their first year of the program. And we did that very deliberately because we believe that living in the IBH community is important in order to get the full benefits of the Living Learning Program, uh, being able to interact with your peers, both inside and outside the classroom, creates strong community bonds, it supports academic success, and it really helps students feel like they are part of the program. So that's an important note to consider as you're thinking about your fall plans. At this point, I think that is it for our brief overview, and I am delighted to turn things over to some of our Cohort 1 students who are joining us tonight. They will introduce ourselves, and we'll start off with Faith. Great. Thank you, Liz. Hello, everyone. It's so excited to see so many of you here with us tonight. So I'm going to introduce myself and the rest of the students here today will introduce themselves. So hi, my name is Faith Lebrun. My hometown is Baltimore, Maryland. Um, currently, I am an operations management business analytics student at the Smith School. Some of my involvement on campus, so first and foremost, I'm a Bannock Cookie Scholar. Um, I was not only a member of IBH, but I'm also a member of SBLF, which is another honors program developing in Smith. Um, I do some marketing for the Smith School, so the Smith Instagram, the IBH Instagram, a bunch of fun stuff there. I'll talk to you guys all about that later. And recently I joined the Snyder Consulting Group, so that's also really exciting as well. Some of my hobbies outside of school, hiking with my golden doodle pup, you can see him on the screen there. He's trained to be off leash, so he likes to run around. Uh, drinking matcha lattes, if anyone knows me, you always see me with a matcha in my hand. Um, I like reading and definitely just exploring Washington, D.C. and taking advantage of our location here at College Park. Oh, there we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Angela. I'm from Potomac, Maryland. My major is information systems, but I'm also double, ma double majoring in OMBA, which was Faith's major too. Um, at UMD, I am a president scholar. I was also in SBLF with Faith. And I'm also in the events committee for the Women in Business Association. And I am a part of the Taiwanese American Student Association on campus. Some of my hobbies I really enjoy are playing volleyball, doing word games, going snowboarding, um, going to concerts, reading, and I also play Pokemon Go on campus. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Akash. I'm from Germantown, Maryland. I went to Poolsville High School and I'm currently a biological sciences major with a concentration in neurobio and physiology. I was a uh, president's and national merit scholar. I'm part of the Terrapin Photography Club. I do club tennis and of course I'm an honors ambassador for the IBH program. I also love to ski, play tennis, do photography, play Pokemon Go with Angela, hike, watch football and cook. Hi everyone, my name is Jai Wang. I'm from Frederick, Maryland, and I'm a finance and information systems double major. Like Faith, I'm also a Vanneker Key Scholar. I'm involved with many clubs on um, in the business school, such as Smith Finance Group. I'm also a part of the SGA Finance Committee. I'm an honors ambassador, and I'm also a part of TASA with Angela. So what I like to do on my free time is I like swimming, I like working out in Richie, I like hanging out with my cute cats. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a picture of them to put on my slide. Um, I like finding new food places, exploring with my friends. As you can see in the picture, this winter break, me and a couple of my friends in IBH, we all went to New York City for a really fun trip. And I also like to play Pokemon Go with Angela and Akash. 
Great. Thank you so much, guys. So what we're going to do now is we're going to transition and give you a tour of Prince Frederick Hall. So I'm going to have, uh, I'm on the sixth floor right now with Angela and Jai. So we're going to show you around. And then maybe after that, Akash, if you want to show around the seventh floor a little bit. Um, but we really want this to be super conversational. Treat it like your own FaceTime with us, you know. <laughs> Treat it like you're on FaceTime with us. You can turn your cameras on, ask us questions with your microphone. As you can see, we like to laugh. So if you, you know, enjoy that with us. So right now, currently we are actually sitting in the lounge on the sixth floor. Hello, yes, so we're all gonna be on the same camera. So basically the lounge is a really fun place where you can do a lot of things, very versatile. So you can come and sit here and study if you need to, if you need to grind out and you just need some moral support. But also we do a lot of other really fun things in the lounge, like play spike ball. There's a pool table on one of the floors here, right? Floor. On the fifth floor, there's a pool table in the lounge. You can play pool. So sometimes um, a really new innovation, you know, IBH is all about innovation in the future is we'll combine two couches together and make a couch bed so people can lay there and take a nap if you need midday. So we're always, they're going to show you this. Yeah. So this is our couch bed. This is our innovation in the lounge. So as you can see, um, right now, there's actually no one in the sixth floor lounge. I'm sure, Akash, if you show the seventh floor lounge, there'll probably be people up yeah. there. So this is the lounge area. There is a microwave in here if you need to heat up some food. Um, there's a sink area as well if you need to wash some dishes. But you can see there's a bunch of games out over there. Students come in and play games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The what? And the best part about this lounge is the fact that we, it's all glass. Mm -hmm. So if you see someone, one of your friends coming around, you can just, you know, wave yes. them in. And like this. It's a great place to really just gain new friends. Yes, it was actually funny. I'll tell you guys a story. So I am doing a takeover for the Terp Honors page. You guys should definitely check that out. It's at Terp Honor on Instagram, Terp Honors on Instagram. And this morning I was filming in the lounge and my friends caught me filming through the glass windows. So, you know, you can definitely see what everybody's doing, but it's nice. So I'm going to head over to the study now. I actually see some other IBHers here. Hi, Matt. If you want to say hi, we're on the IBH call. And this is the more quiet because people study in here so you guys want to say hi hi so we've got some big brains studying right now but this is if you need to focus a little bit more you can come here thank you so you guys um I, what was some things you wish you knew before or what's your favorite part about ibh let's start there um i would definitely say the community like the community in ibh is just absolutely amazing most of my best friends on campus are basically all in IBH, and we just, we do a lot of fun things together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, my favorite part about IBH is, like, you can struggle together and have fun together. <laughs> so, AM class, we would all go on the dreadful 755 AM <laughs> elevator down together, and we struggled together, but then, you know, on the weekends, we would all hang out together and have fun and make up for that. So, right now, I'm walking down the sixth floor, so... Um, here's our RA. Girls school. This doubles, is traditional side. Yeah, so this is the double side and the traditional side. And then on the other side is the suite side. Yeah. So a double traditional is essentially where two people in one room. And then a suite is where you have two rooms of two in each with a bathroom yeah. as well. So if you're on the traditional side, you use the communal bathrooms. Um, they actually, they are cleaned every day. They're kept pretty neat. Um, there's also two gender neutral bathrooms. There's one here located on the traditional side and there's one by the lounge that yeah. we were just in, mm -hmm. which is closer to the semi-suite side. Do either of you want to show your room? I yeah. would, but I don't have my key. Okay, so we'll start here with Angela and Jackie's room. So you guys can see what it looks like inside. It's a little messy. <laughs> Jackie's running to get her key. Yeah. yeah, so here is like what a room looks like. Um, there's obviously all types of layouts. One of my favorite things about these are the huge window. So you get a bunch of natural light, the floor to ceiling. Um, a lot of students, what they do is they raise their bed so they can have some extra storage under there. But you do have two closets, one for each student. Um, obviously, it comes with a desk and a chair as you need. And yeah, I think that's pretty good. Um, any questions in the chat that I'm missing? It's kind of hard to keep up with that. So if there's any, we'll have are there any single rooms or suites of singles? Yeah. So there are single rooms here at Prince Frederick. They're at the end of this hall on the traditional side and there are suites as well. Um, and when you do house here, you get to fill out a preferencing form to kind of indicate which style of room you're most interested in. 
great benefit, like Dr. Bailey said. So Prince Frederick Hall is right next to Van Munching Hall, which is the business school. Mm -hmm. So when you do have classes there, it's really close by. Yeah, for me, all of my classes right now are in VMH. So same. I just so I wake up and I go. <laughs> I never have to walk more than like a minute yeah. to get to the class. So that's beautiful. You wake up at so if you have a morning class, very that's nice. very helpful. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look in Jai and Ocarina's room. Oh, also every every uh, door has um, <laughs> words that you can write things on. <laughs> Do you mind if you come in really fast for IBH? <laughs> okay, we have another IBH in here. It's two IB. It's uh, Ocarina Jai. So hi. So this is their room. It's very pink and beautiful. I really like it. Very beautiful. You can design yeah. your room anywhere you want. And it's there's a lot of open space. Yeah, there's yeah. tons of space. I will say Prince Frederick has one of the mm -hmm. biggest rooms Definitely. of all of the other dorms. People call so. our, our dorm the bougie dorm. They do. So. Yes. Yeah. We're very happy about that. Also, I want to plug. So we have an IBH Instagram. It's at IBH underscore UMD. I highly recommend that you follow. We're going to have a lot more content coming there so you can understand why students chose the IBH program, what you can expect in the program. Thank you, Liz. And um, you know, if you watch some of the why IBH videos, uh, several students mentioned that a big contributing factor was that they got to live in Prince Frederick Hall. So um, let's see. Anything else we should show here? Oh yeah, let's show the washing room. So here's the laundry room. And there are three washers and three dryers currently on each floor here. Actually, I think one is out of service right now, but it'll be fixed by the time you get here, so no worries. Um, but yeah, so you can do that as well. Um, any other questions? Do you know any of the engineering major students? Do you know how they find the location of Prince Frederick with respect to the engineering quad? Do we know? Yeah, we know. We know. Josh and uh, Matt are both engineers. Josh has an electric scooter. A lot of students on campus have like electric scooters or electric skateboards, mm -hmm. but distance wise, they've never really said anything about the like complaining about walking. Because yeah. I think P. Freddy is maybe like a 10, 15 minute walk it's, from the engineering. It's building. really not that bad. And you'll you'll learn as you come onto the UMD campus mm -hmm. that you're going to have to walk regardless, yeah. pretty yeah. much anywhere. So it's just honestly part of the routine. You get really used to it. Like the mm -hmm. first week I was like, whoa, this is a lot of walking, even though I'm a business student and I only had to really walk to BMH. <laughs> but you know, for like the North Campus Dining Hall and stuff like that. Um, but you do get used to walking again. Electric scooters are common. They have VOs on campus, which is where you don't have to own it. You can just borrow it for you know a short period of time as well as, you know, bikes, skateboards, all that good stuff. Can you be in a suite as a freshman? Definitely. A lot of our friends are in suites right now. So definitely to answer that question. Yeah, no problem. And I think the cost, do you want to show around upstairs on the seventh floor? Yeah, sure. I can do that. Uh, okay. I don't have shoes on, but I, it's fine. So okay. this is my <laughs> room. Uh, there's definitely a lot of space, as Faith said, um, like, it is enough space for you and your roommate. You have a lot of privacy here, but you also have enough space to like call some friends over or just hang out with everyone in your room. Uh, I can go out in the hallway now. Here's Steven. Hi, Steven. Say hi to 100 people. Okay. Hi, Steven. So I'm walking down here. I think our floor is a bit better. That's why all the girls come up here to hang out. But this is um, Nick. He's, an, he's another honors ambassador. Yeah, so I think, like Jai said, a huge part of IB. Akash, you're definitely cutting out a little bit for me. Yeah. That's because he's on the seventh floor. Okay. Um, while that's happening, I did see another question kind of, you know, location of the Smith School, but I also wanted to answer. So the dining halls and gyms, um, if you, again, can't plug in enough, Terp Honors and IBH, I did a takeover. So you could see that I, oh, he's back. Oh, sorry. I lost Wi-Fi. Here, Go I'm going to embarrass some people. This is Krishy. This is Josh. This is hey Matt guys. and Zamar. So Josh uh -huh. and Matt are engineering majors. They have to go to the engineering quad every day. I'm myself and I'm a, I'm a bio. So it is a decent amount of walking, but I've found that after a couple of days, you definitely get used to that. And I feel like that's just a part of uh, UMD in general. Great. Thank you. Um, so back to the, my question. So I, Prince Frederick Hall is kind of right here. Van Munching is right next door, like a minute away. And South Canyon Science Hall is like 
two minutes away. So you're really close to the business school, really close to the dining hall. In terms of gyms, so there's a few gyms on campus. So Epley is on North Campus. That's definitely the biggest gym and the most busy, um, but that's all the way on North Campus. So that is about a 15 minute walk, depending on how fast you walk, of course. And then the gym that usually people use on South Campus, I definitely, Angela and Jai can attest to this, is Richie. Um, and that's about 10 minutes away. Yeah, it's about a 10 minute walk, which if you're going to the gym, it's a nice warm up anyway. So I like that. Um, let's see, any other questions? Um, I would just say that Akasha's opinion about floors and coolness, whatever it was, is just his own opinion. It's not the perspective of the program. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> um, yeah, but definitely like with IBH, I think community is so important to us. Like I said, my closest friends here now are the my friends here in IBH over winter break, as Jai alluded to. Um, they went on the New York City trip. I couldn't make that one, but we did go to on a deep creek trick, deep creep, deep, deep creek trip. And that was really fun. I actually learned how to ski with my friend Ocarina. Um, so that was really great. And our friend Jackie, all of these people are in IBH. She taught us how to ski. So that was a really fun experience. And again, like just in terms of community, I came from Baltimore. So my, there are quite a few students here that come from my high school that actually go to Maryland. And in fact, I actually hang out with my new friends here in IBH far more than my friends that I came in from high school, which I think is a really um, great opportunity to build and expand your network and community. Um, any other questions? Faith, there was a question about um, Prince Frederick's location in relation to the other freshman um, dorms oh, on campus, yes. residence halls, and kind of how it is to hang out with students who maybe aren't part of one of those three programs that are in Prince Frederick. Sure, totally. So in terms of location, especially as freshmen, being on South Campus, you are a little bit farther away from some of the other freshmen who are usually on North Campus. However, it's that really doesn't hinder anyone on campus from meeting up and hanging out, especially if you have classes together. So if you have business friends, they're going to be down on South Campus for the business school, or you may be up on North Campus, depending on what school you're a part of. So in my experience, although you may be a little bit farther, from us other freshmen, you have your entire community here with IBH who really, for the most part, it's definitely gonna become your close network and close friends. But aside from that, um, it usually isn't gonna interfere with you seeing other friends. Um, when we go to basketball games and football games, that is all over on North Campus. So that's also a great way to meet up with friends on North Campus as well. I think there are a few questions in the chat that we might have skipped over by accident okay um so there's one question that says how did you decide to join this program being the first cohort and having no reviews from previous cohorts sure do you want me to start yeah you can go okay so for me, I love when I feel like I can have influence over things and when my voice and my opinion really matters. <laughs> so that was also something that really drew me to IBH because it is a new program. I really took that as a benefit and an opportunity that I could come in with my perspective and really share that, you know, with the directors of the program and kind of my vision for IBH. And they have been so responsive to that. And I think, so that was one of the most exciting things for me that is because it is a new program, you know, you're what you want and what you want to do with the program really matters to all of us. And secondly, for me, um, I did look at the website, even though we are working on that, right, Liz? So it's, it's really developing. It's looking great. Um, but just like kind of the interdisciplinary focus I was really excited for. Also, that is a smaller cohort size for me. Maryland was a huge school. I came from a really small high school. So having a smaller family that I can really learn with and grow with was also important to me. But Jai and Angela, I'd be curious um, your thoughts about that as well. Uh, I think my reasoning is a little simpler. Um, when I was looking through the different honors college LLPs, there wasn't really one that stood out to me until I read IBH description because coming into college, I knew that I wanted to do business and I was a business undecided major. Um, and the fact that there was a new business LLP coming out was something that stood out. And also the fact that it was interdisciplinary made it even more appealing because as a business undecided major, I could talk to the various different disciplines inside the community and kind of see what field I would be interested in going into. So that's ultimately what made me choose IBH. <clears throat> oh, I didn't realize I was um, unmuted the whole time. But um, for me, it's kind of similar to Faith in the sense of just like 
I want it because it was such a new program I knew I could really you know be able to kind of have my own thing and be able to be a part of something larger and shape something larger um I've always been someone who is more spontaneous and I kind of like to go with the flow on certain things so again just like being a part of this brand completely new cohort I thought it was just a really good opportunity for this and then of course you guys know because it was in Prince Frederick and the location and especially as a business major that also just really uh, factored into my decision. I just wanted to add um, I'm one of the only like non-business majors talking here today I'm a bio major and so I was heavily debating between the integrated life sciences program and the IBH program but at the end of the day I really wanted uh, like that inter interdisciplinary approach kind of having a balance between biology coming back to my dorm and learning about business as Dr. Bailey always says everyone can learn business and everyone should learn business it's a huge part of anything if I want to go and become a doctor in the future if I want to start my own practice do anything like that I definitely need to know a lot of business tactics and I would say it's about a 50 50 balance between non Smith majors and Smith majors there's a lot of CS majors engineering majors there's even a couple like life sciences majors and stuff like that there's definitely going to be people who share your interests and i feel, feel like one of the biggest benefits of that is if i have a calculus question i can just go down the hall talk to my friend ask him for help a lot of people come to me for chemistry questions because i'm a bio major so there's just a lot of things that you can help each other out with Great. I saw the question about the general balance between Smith students and non-business majors. So I think we went over this early in the presentation. It's Liz, it's just under half our business students. Correct. It was 28 out of 62 for cohort one. So just under half. Very nice. There is another question in the chat that was, if I am a student in Smith, would this program be a review of what I would already be learning in my business courses? Yeah, I know they highlighted the answer to that earlier, but I definitely actually as a student did want to bring my perspective into that. I'm sure Jai and Angela, you guys can speak to this as well. IBH for me has definitely not been a repeat and it's been an extension or very aligns very nicely with some of my other coursework. So in 110, which is a course that everyone has to take, um, like some of the concepts we spoke about there, we spoke about more in depth in IBH, but definitely I've never felt like it was review or redundant. In fact, I've always felt like my IBH courses have really been my most foundational um, classes and most exciting classes so far. Yeah, like just to add on to that, I completely agree with Faith in the sense of just Okay, I completely agree with the sense of faith in the sense of just it's completely different. And most of the Smith classes at um, in the Smith School, it's very conceptual. There's a lot of just like terms and just stuff you need to memorize for. However, in IBH, we definitely do more hands-on activities, and we really kind of see how things in like the real world and deal with things like that. Great. Um, there's. The question about for the future of analysis course, will there be any programming or data analytics skills that will be taught? We just started the course, so I'm not, not entirely sure. I, I think yeah, Dr. I, Bailey. If I may answer that, yeah. So we are, are um, we have majors that not everybody knows um, kind of the ins and outs of statistics and probability. So those are things that are probably you'll be introduced in your majors. It is. The word interspray is very important and we need to make the material accessible to all. So, uh, so far in the class, we've talked about uh, personally identifying information, the importance of kind of uh, using data to help provide better customer service, but some of the limitations uh, with regard to kind of overstepping boundaries. So I would say it's a more qualitative assessment. Um, I'm going to be introducing kind of sentiment analysis and machine learning from a conceptual standpoint, uh, but I'm going to save the uh, Python, pandas, R scripts, all of those things for other courses uh, in the curricula. I think someone also asked about the vegan options near Prince Frederick Hall. Um, I guess I can talk about that. So South Campus Dining Hall and all of the dining halls, in fact, all have designated vegetarian and vegan options, um, but also throughout just like the regular food sections with like fruit, like pizza and all of these other different food options. 
like there are little name tags almost for each dish that's out and it has labels that says whether it's vegan vegetarian or like gluten-free etc um so there will definitely be options for you to eat um so I wouldn't worry too much about that <laughs> yeah I'm vegetarian myself and honestly I haven't gotten bored of the food yet in the dining hall and there's also a lot of restaurants around here. That's one of the good things about li living in Prince Frederick. At There's like a five minute walk to the spot or ramen places. Or There's always options for what you want to eat. And there's always friends that you want to go with. Okay, so the question, how challenging have you found the garbage program to date? I personally have not found it incredibly difficult or challenging to manage. I think it's a very thought provoking class. So there's a lot of discussion, there's a lot of reflection. Um, but it, it's what I love a lot about IBH is it's not one of those classes. And Jai, you highlighted this one earlier. It's not one of those classes where you need to memorize a bunch of vocabulary or it's about getting the right multiple choice answer. It's really about expanding your awareness of using business as a discipline to connect and really you know, asking the hard questions, asking the thought provoking questions. And a lot of time it's collaborative assignments, group work, teamwork in class. And then individual assignments usually consist of position papers that you write on a weekly basis. So you're usually given an article. Um, what do you think about that article? How does it relate to you? How does it relate to business? And you kind of reflect and write on that. So me personally, I haven't found it incredibly challenging. I think it's, um, it's actually, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on the call. It's one of my favorite classes. Angela or Jai, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I can jump right into it. Um, yeah, it's definitely not challenging. Not that, not to say that it is an easy class in the sense of like, oh, it's so easy, but it's definitely a very fun and enjoyable class to be in. And the workload is not crazy because I know I don't want to speak poorly on other honors colleges, but I know some other honors colleges courses do take a little bit more work, but it's very flexible. Um, the coursework that we do have and Again, Liz and Joe are very receptive to feedback. So if you guys do feel like there's too much work, you can always talk to them about it. The question about capstone projects, did Joe, Dr. Bailey or Liz wanna talk about that? Yeah, actually I was starting to, to type something in the chat, but it's probably easier for me to just say that, um, you know, the, the capstone will allow students of all majors to bring what they're learning in their major to the capstone. Um, so while we haven't finalized it, uh, what Liz and I have been talking about uh, is a prompt uh, where you have to design or create something and you'll work collaboratively within your teams and then um, pitch kind of that design to an outside company. So, you know, one possible example is, you know, we have a lot of hospitality companies uh, near the University of Maryland between Marriott and um, Choice Hotels and, and Hilton. So, you know, one could imagine what is the future of a hotel look like? And if you're so inclined to, let's say, study engineering, as the question asked, uh, you would bring in some of those engineering design principles, uh, but then have a chance to interact with other students in IBH. And people can bring something from kinesiology, the study of motion and, and business to take a look at finance. And you know, we're, we're seeing so many disruptions that are happening kind of in the market and companies look to students at the University of Maryland to help them anticipate what some of these future trends are going to be. They're really keen on, on making sure they're recruiting you and giving you internship opportunities. And because students in the Honors College, you know, really are a highly sought after uh, students from an internship perspective is, you know, we're, we're kind of exploring that. So we don't have the set of companies yet, uh, but certainly at the University of Maryland, we do a lot with experiential learning. Uh, I myself have done a lot with student teams uh, working with outside companies. And so I think there's a lot of possibility and, you know, we're not going to put you in a particular kind of, you know, bucket and say, no, these are the disciplines that you must have within this. We want to give you that room to explore and to expand. And by the time students are second semester sophomores, uh, they'll have much more of the coursework for their major under their belt that they'll bring to bear in that capstone. Great. Thank you. Uh, the question about can you sync IBH with startups, I think, is a really good question that it's a frequently asked question as well. So you can pair IBH as an honors program with some of the other honors um, things on campus. So, for example, Quest is another program that you can join at the end of your freshman year. And that's something that you can do in extension of IBH. Um, startup show, I don't I believe that's more like an extracurricular. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. You can definitely do both.
There's a question about roommates for Prince Frederick Hall. Um, you can room with people in different LLPs, but if they aren't already in P. Freddy, which is either like an ACES, DCC, or IBH student, you are more likely to get pulled out of IBH if you room with someone who isn't already in Prince Frederick because Prince Frederick is a very, um, it's a very wanted hall. So typically if you don't go with the general roommates inside P. Freddy, you won't really get the hall. Yeah, I think we had an example of somebody who, you know, found a roommate not in the honors college they agreed to be roommates and because their roommate was not in the honors college they were not placed in prince frederick so um i, I would recommend trying to stay within that community of the three programs liz would could you please talk about the uh, admissions process i know in the preferencing within the honors college there's i think five choice sets that you have and um and Liz is the one who gets to kind of manage that process. Can you talk through that, please, Liz? Absolutely. So any student who lists IBH as one of their um, preferences when they submit their Honors College Preference form will be considered by us in the program. Uh, in terms of how we're selecting students, uh, we're definitely considering the statement that the student provides on the preference form, but also we have access to their overall application materials to the university. So we're able to consider you know, previous leadership efforts during high school, extracurricular experiences, their essay that they submitted to the university. And so we're really looking for students who seem to be a good fit for the IB program community who have that interest in business and maybe connecting it to a business major or another discipline and kind of explaining on the preference form how they'd like to make those connections and contribute to our community. Um, approximately how many words should the statements be? I'm not sure if that answer, maybe Chantelle or Jenny from the Honors College can help us with that question. But in general, if you haven't submitted your preference form yet, I would suggest that you think about uh, explaining why ABH is your interest and your choice and how you plan to kind of connect that and enjoy the experience of the community over the two years. Uh, um, yeah, if I'm I just may... gonna say, oh. sorry, Joe. Sorry, no, um, go ahead. For the... For the sentences, you know, it is a few sentences, and so there's certainly space for students to write, I don't know, somewhere between three and six sentences. So I think that's plenty. Mm -hmm. I will say in going through this for the first cohort and reading some of the, the statements, one of the things that really, I think, resonated with me, not just what a student wanted to get out of the program, but what they were bringing to the program. Uh, one of the things I really enjoy about our first cohort, and they really Kind of established an incredible culture of of kind of of, of giving uh, so it's not just about what can i get from the program it's what can i bring to the program so i know those just a few sentences um you know don't say a lot but um it really does help to to consider uh, what is it that you're bringing what makes you unique what what perspective what you know uh, interest or passion and, and how does that align with what our ibh uh, is doing so i think suman asked the question about IBH and Prince Frederick Hall. I think if you want to be in Prince Frederick Hall, you should be one of these three honors programs. Even if your major is Smith, if you're like Smith and university honors, that's another part of campus. There was a, a question that I didn't understand. How do different preferences affect each other? Solomon, I don't know if you want to unmute or expand on that. How do different preferences, what preferences are you referring to there, Solomon? Um, I can weigh in a little bit. I, I assume that, that Solomon is asking about the preference form because students are asked to submit um, oh, at see. least okay. five preferences. Um, and students are considered individually for each one, one at a time. So whichever your first preference program is, you're considered for that one. Um, if that program says no, you would move on to your second preference program and et cetera. So they don't really interact. It's it's a one at a time um, process. Jenny, could you also speak to whether the date of the form submission is a factor? 
Sure. Uh, the answer is no. Everyone who submits the form on or before the February 20th deadline is considered for, you know, the programs in order that they submit the preferences. So all of the programs know that the, the February 20th is the deadline. And so they're, um, they generally don't make any decisions until after February 20th. So they have a lot of work <laughs> the week of February 20th to consider all of the, the programs who have preference or the students who have preference their program. Um, and then FYI, we send out an invite to you for letting you know which LLP you've been invited to um, early in March. So look for that as well. Great, thank you. I couldn't agree more with Joe in terms of the first cohort and um, how lucky we are to get to work with them this year and next year. They have brought such energy and engagement to the program. And so that's definitely something that we have on, on our minds as we're considering students for cohort two. Um, if I can share one small example around the holidays towards the end of the fall semester, uh, Joe and I were each presented with a small gift from the cohort, uh, completely unsolicited, just a surprise that the students brought us where they had taken a group photo and printed it as a holiday card for the two of us. And it really touched my heart. So uh, we want to keep this culture going with our second cohort. So Sylvia asked a question. She was asking how hard it is to balance an IBH course with your biology major classes. So at UMD or at any school, really, biology is a really difficult major. And there's a lot of requirements to do that. But balancing the IBH course is not way too hard. The IBH course is usually in the morning. And I was able to schedule my classes around that. But you do have to keep in mind that biology comes with a lot of work, especially at UMD. And you have to take a lot of weed out classes like organic chemistry or biochemistry later on. And you have to be willing to balance both of those things. But I definitely don't think IBH is holding me back at all. I think it definitely helps me. I think we've covered most of the questions in the chat. I, we have just a few minutes remaining, I believe. If anyone has one last question, I will also put in the chat now our program contact information. If additional questions come up, you're welcome to reach out to us uh, via email or phone. So I'll put that in so that you can save it. And if, if I may, I know for some of you, um, you're exploring universities uh, in addition to the University of Maryland. And, uh, and perhaps some of you might be a little bit concerned about the size of the University of Maryland. Um, but I think one of the things that I really enjoy about IBH is we're a tight knit learning community and uh, just getting a sense that um, a large college, as they often say, can kind of become smaller thanks to programs like this. Um, and as you can see, you really build true connections with your classmates, not just from the curriculum side of things, but being connected to people uh, by living in Prince Frederick Hall.